I think you get the idea right now that we've come here to ask some big questions and to really open up a serious discussion. We're not talking about how do we incrementally improve on the existing system. We're really trying to look in terms of human needs and human potential and how would we do it? How could we do it differently and better than today? There's an old proverb that it takes centuries of experience to make a drop of history that will be recorded and remembered through time. And it takes centuries of history to create a drop of what we call civilization that's going to last as a lasting lesson for, human, for humanity. And it goes on to say it takes centuries of civilization to distill a drop of culture which is really the essence of human learning. So our experience, our, civ our culture, our history, our civilization, our culture, and I would say ultimately our education, is all about extracting the essence from human experience over thousands of years and passing it on to the next generation in a concentrated, abridged form that is relevant, digestible, usable, to help the next generation start off where all of us have come to, not repeating, not reinventing the wheel and all of the mistakes that we made along the way, and go forward beyond that. So if I ask myself the question, what's the single greatest invention of humanity ever, uh, education comes at the top of the list. And we have to look at this, if, if what we have as education today is really the accumulative result of thousands of years of human ingenuity, the thing that distinguishes us most from all the other species on the planet, then we have to be very humble in criticizing it or thinking we could do better. Uh, or finding fault with all the efforts of millions of people who are dedicated to passing on this knowledge to the future. But I think we also have to be very realistic about this and recognize that the process of education is the most difficult thing that human beings do. Because it requires us to become conscious it's not enough that we know what's happened in the past. It's not enough that we remember it. It's not enough that we can pass on the information, as Federico was saying. It's not enough that we can construct theories about it. We have to learn the process of passing on the essence of experience to other people. Do we know how to do that today? Do we even know the essence of our own experience that we should pass on? I think the essence of education is about human accomplishment. Not just accomplishment at a job or earning money or accomplishment in every sphere of our existence, of being successful, happy, secure, content, healthy human beings, responsible human beings, and building responsible, effective, sustainable societies, and living together in an increasingly globalized, a world that's changing at lightning speed, a world of unprecedented complexity and therefore of unprecedented uncertainty. And I think it's fair to start by saying we don't know how to do that. All of you who are parents know how difficult it is to pass on the essence of what you think you have learned and you really believe to your own children. How do we do this on a global level? So if we start with the premise that this is the single most wonderful invention of humanity and that this is the single most greatest challenge we have and that we've been doing it by a long trial and error process over centuries and millennium and it stands to reason that we've still got a long way to go. And then we ask ourselves, well, from what we have learned up until now, is there any way we could do it better? And so I'd like to ask you in the spirit of 
David Perkins, I'd like to ask a question to each of us. If, from what, regardless of whether you're past 70 or 80 or 50 or 30 or just in your uh, late teens or 20s, what is the most important lesson that you've learned from your experience so far in life? That if you wanted to pass on the gem and essence of what it is that enables you to be a contented, successful, achieving, harmonious, sustainable, whatever the adjectives you are, human, good human being. What is the most important thing that you think needs to be passed on to the future? And then we can ask ourselves, how effectively is our present system doing that? How much more there is that we know individually or we know socially, that we learned things that I've learned over 70 years. I wish only I had learned all of this when I was a youngster. And it's not the information that Federico mentioned. It's not all the equations and the things that uh, uh, David Perkins put on the board. And as he said, it doesn't mean that we don't need any of that. When I look back on what I learned in education, it's hard for me to find anything that hasn't been of some relevance or value uh, in my life. But none of it, even the best of it, uh, is what I would control the es essential essence to pass on. So if we start with the premise that we're trying to invent something, we have been trying for hundreds or centuries, thousands of years, but we still have a long way to go, and it's logical that we have started by passing on our knowledge of what's going on outside of the things we observe, especially in physical nature. And then recording all of the facts that we could and finding out about the geography and the, uh, learning how to draw maps and conceptions of everything and discovering and inventing the language of mathematics as a symbolic language, inventing our own languages, multiple languages, inventing our literature, creating so many things. It's natural that we started outside, but that's all external to us. That's all an education about things, an education about facts, an education about information, an education about skills in multiplication or statistical analysis or whatever it is. But none of it is the thing that carries us, none of it is central to what carries us through life. It's the essence of our experience. So it raises a question which we want to explore through this conference, among many questions is, in an age where there's a plethora of information and a glut of information, as David said, we've got more on, the, uh, on our cell phone than human beings ever had in the past. When the University of Bologna was founded in 1088, to go someplace and listen to somebody who actually knew something, knew some facts and could tell you about it, and listen to them as long as you could, made a lot of sense because we knew very little, and there were very few people who knew. That was four centuries before the printing press. We didn't have printed books. Very few people were even literate, so it made sense. Today, in a new age, we really have to reflect on how much can we get the information ourselves? how much do we really need to be taught in a school, and what is it the essence of that? And so one of the themes, the dominant themes of this is, can we shift the focus from an education on subject, I think it was Winston who uh, mentioned it, to really educating the person. Because isn't that, what edu isn't that what's going to stay with us at, through life, regardless of how many jobs we get and how many countries we are in and how many experiences we have? The one constant is ourselves. And how much are we really learning about ourselves and how we relate to other people and how we do that successfully and how we as individuals and groups and societies, communities and humanity work and successfully work together and live together. How much are we really learning that in our educational system? This is a profound question. I think we also know that all those who teach know that we learn most when we teach others. And so, uh, picking up on what Winston said, because that was really what he was talking about, it means we have a, a, we have a paradigm in education 
still largely based on what was there in 1088, when only one person knew, so the only way you could communicate was this. Thank you. We have, we still have a system that maximizes the learning of those who are teaching, of the educators. Because you do learn most when you try to teach other people. Can we flip the paradigm? We'll talk about in other sessions experiments and work that's going on, and this is nothing new. As Winston indicated, it's been going on a long time. We've known this. But it's a lot easier to tell people what we know than to get them to think and, uh, and discover for themselves. And then the paradigm shift is not, is not from one instructor to another, it's from one person to all, because everybody becomes a source of that learning process. Is it feasible? Is it practical? How could it be done? These are questions to be explored. We also have a system that's fundamentally a competitive system. Each of us is ranking their performance against everybody else. Uh, you go into companies and you tell, and they'll tell you the first thing, you've trained your people for 10 or 12 or 15 years to compete with each other and learn by themselves. Once they come into our company, the most important thing is they should work with other people, know how to cooperate with other people, and, uh, co and learn together and discover together and create together. Can we change the paradigm? Is it possible? Can we move from the subject to the person as the real center, from passive dissemination of information to active learning, from competition to cooperation? These are some of the questions we want to ask in the next three days and explore. None of us claim we have all the answers. None of us claim this will be easy. We know if, this is the, if what we have today is the result of thousands of years of learning, it's not going to be unlearned uh, uh, very soon. But when we look at the challenges that humanity faces today, the complexity, the speed uh, the comp uh, of things today, I think we all agree that we do need to do better than the past. We, do, we can't afford to slowly, over another centuries, learn how to do better. We need to be able to help our next generation do much better than in the past. And that's what we're here for today. Thank you.